Hey guys, it's Ian back with another three, uh, five minutes tutorial on 3ds Max. Uh, the next step in our little mini series here is to take this UVW that we've just unwrapped in 3ds Max, and we're going to apply textures to it. And I'm just going to give you a basic overview on how this works. So you remember last time we took all those panes from our safe model and we flattened the map out, and then we exported that and rendered that map so that we could then import that to um, Photoshop or whichever photo manipulation program you use and we can apply textures to the map and then we can import that back in and apply that as a material to the safe okay so what we've got here is we've got the UVW and I've got an empty uh, 1024 by 1024 um, pixel canvas in Photoshop you remember it was 2048 by 2048 on the safe UVW um, that's absolutely fine as long as it's the same aspect ratio it's not a problem so we're just going to place that in and then I'm going to zoom in because it's a little hard to see because it's just quite a light colour Okay, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uncheck the background I'm actually going to delete the background completely uh, layer 0 is gone yes um, and then in fact no, let's undo it let's keep that because it just makes it a little bit easier to see right so as you remember from before, um, we've got all of this in here. It is all going to be one set texture. Now, to make a tileable texture and make this really finely detailed, because you remember this is going to be um, quite pitted, um, safe, and it's going to be. Okay, so going back to it. You remember that the. Um, the there's. The, it's going to be very much one color. It's going to be a texture. We're going to need a tileable texture. Um, we're going to need it to be um, quite fine detailed and pitted and that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Google and we're just going to find some random texture for now. Um, ideally you'd be using your own and you'd have a high def camera but for the purposes of tutorial and learning Google is absolutely fine. So we're going to look for a pitted metal texture. It doesn't need to be tileable because we're going to learn how to tile right now. So I'm just going to go and quickly jump into that the first one we come to will be absolutely fine um, and I'm going to grab that one looks good 2000 by 2000 it's an equal aspect ratio and it's quite a lot of detail in there so when my browser wants to catch up because my internet's really really terrible um, okay finally we got that and here's the texture I'm just going to save this save image as metal texture just to bear in mind, this video might go a little over five minutes, but I'm going to try and keep it as close to as possible. So again, save image. Come on, why are you not saving? Okay, we got there in the end. Uh, right, so I'm going to just rip that straight from there, and I'm going to apply that straight onto my panel in Photoshop. I'm just going to zoom out slightly, make sure it's all fitted in nicely. Uh, yeah, so we're going to place that in, and then the next thing I'll do before anything else, you're going to notice that the texture is far too big and detailed in here so I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna duplicate layer to a new document and I'll show you why in a second right so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go and select everything on screen and then I'm gonna go to filter I'm gonna go down I'm gonna go other and I'm gonna go offset and you remember this is a 1024 by 1024 yeah so I'm actually going to 512 by 512 no I'm not I'm gonna go 1024 by 1024 that was correct in the first place now you'll notice here you got the seam is now in the middle rather than on the outside and this is gonna make this tileable so that when you match these up edge to edge it's actually going to fit in perfectly so the next thing we need to do is grab the clone stamp and I'm just gonna rasterize this section oh no because I haven't defined an area yet it has already been yet yeah, rasterized there you go so it's now editable and I'm just gonna clone that and I'm just gonna apply that just to take That line out, take it away completely. And I just need to clone that in there. 
and then I'm gonna clone that there and I'm just gonna oh that from there and I'm just going to run all the way down and that should actually just about marry all of that up for me okay and then if I come back down here I should be able to go all the way down and it should in theory make this just about invisible now you can probably still notice a bit of difference so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mess it around a touch not too much because you will notice it still but for the size not actually that bad and it's yeah not not too bad and it's going to be tidal so I'm just going to now duplicate this layer back over to my original document and that's untitled one and I'm going to go back to my document now you'll notice I've got two copies and I've got the original and I've got the new one the new one is I need to come back out of that and I'm just going to zoom back out once more, okay, so the new one, which is this one with the blurred edges, I'm going to select all of it again, and then I'm going to freeform transform, and then I'm just gonna resize that and use the snap guidelines to make this smaller. And then I'm going to duplicate that layer to the same layer, and I'll pin it up. Okay, so I just need to that again I need to go back to one of these apply the transform it's absolutely fine and now if I just duplicate that layer okay and I'm really conscious of the fact that our time is getting on so I'm just gonna clone those two as well duplicate the layers okay and I'm gonna drag them down and put them there for a second and then into there now, you can see, obviously, there is a little bit of blending issue there, but on a smaller scale, I'm not really going to notice that too much. And again, you can see that's much finer detail. Um, and now if I was to just file and save as, save that as safe texture and PNG format, I'm going to go to my safe textures and I'll save that into there. And that's absolutely fine. Now, in the next video, we're going to reapply this back as a material and we're going to see how that works. So, thanks for watching. Any comments, leave them down below, and we'll see you in the next one.